So there's this good video that someone put together called Retirement Post Mortem. Retirement Post Mortem, sorry, on the Friday Kids subreddit, where Brennan kind of goes back on his quit his quitting stance. Strange one. I think I might have played it. I'm not too sure if I did. If I did, I forgot. So please forgive me if I'm going over it a second time. But it's a funny video because he did say he quit, but now all of a sudden he's saying he didn't quit. So let's actually play it quickly here so you can see what I mean. Um, yeah, I had to cancel Austin and Nashville. Uh, and usually I hate doing that stuff. Um, it happens. But uh, yeah, I think this time I just don't care. That's where I'm at. I, I got I to gotta be home more. I'm going to pull back from tour. And that was the main thing that stuck out to me. I just don't care. He didn't even start by saying it's because of my kids, my family. He's he, the first reason he made was I don't care anymore about touring. Like as if he's exhausted and he's over it in terms of going to clubs, fly. Imagine flying a couple of hours, right? And then landing in another state and then you've only got 10 people to perform to. That's going to be, got to be a horrible feeling. Even if you're, it's all your fault and he's unfunny and he's not good at comedy and he lacks humility and he's narcissistic, whatever. It's still got to hurt. If you fly a couple of hours to another state, you drive for hours and you get there and there's like 10 people there. That's got to be, that's not going to be good for the self-confidence, right? For the self-esteem, right? <laughs> it's not going to be good. Much. And I just got to be home, man. I got to. I can't miss Tiger's games. Can't miss my Bosti growing up. Uh, baby girl. Uh, just, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm <laughs> Cloud K20, just don't care at all. <laughs> with, the, with the shrug. <laughs> That's horrible. That's so mean. Just don't care at all. It's fucking so mean. I'm tired. Well, everybody thinks you quit comedy, and everybody thinks you quit. That, um, how about that went viral? On Bloody Elbow. Take they a do anything. Break. Yeah, I'm not quitting. I, ju I just, I'm not going to Toronto. I'm not going to the East Coast. I'm not going to Toronto. I'm not going to the East Coast. Those are two very big parts of, well, one's obviously North America and one's in Canada, but those are two very um, sparse, you know, large areas of of land that you're completely saying you're not going to go and tour at. You know what's been really funny? He's never really been big on the East Coast, isn't it? What's that about, do you think? He's never really spoken highly of the East Coast at all. Of course, in the beginning, it was because of, you know, Legion of Skanks not being fans of him. But he's never really been big in the East Coast. The people on the East Coast don't really fuck with his comedy, innit? <laughs> I have a set next week. Big guest. Yes. Fire Kids That's going live. It's one night only, one, one night show. Only, one show, Vulcan Gas Company. The mother Allegedly, that show's only sold 15 tickets. So my theory or my hypothesis that if they join their fan bases together, they can make more money is not looking to be that accurate. According to the Final Kids subreddit people, that joint show they're doing together, TFAT K Live, has only sold 15 tickets to date. It's looking dicey out there for both of these guys. Both of these guys. Ship uh, Stepmom. Yeah. We're at the Vulcan Gas Company at 10 p.m. One show only, Final Kids Live. 10 p.m. One show only. We have a residency only. there. We have, I have said next week. Yeah, uh, we want to start once doing a month. this once a month. The fire and kill. Uh, they say too many. They say they just share too much information. Now they're saying they have a residency. So I'm sure somebody on the Fire and Kids subreddit is going to be keeping an eye out for the dates for next month in March. They're going to keep an eye out for it. And if they don't see it, they're going to be like, what happened to the residency then? Residency is like once a month, isn't it? That's how residencies usually work. Unless it's every two months, then they'll check it in fucking april and then if it's not there again then so you know what i mean like they just talk too much they put out too much information to look like big dogs and to look like they're like you know in demand then when it doesn't happen they pretend like it didn't happen you know that's the thing that's really funny oh yeah i've got this tour coming up 10 tickets only nearly sold out last tickets available then when they have to cancel the whole show they never mention it <laughs> <laughs> and i also think like why why cancel honestly the comedians are so fucking they have it so easy in the dj world there's no such thing as canceling shows a you probably need the money and b you need the practice to perform so you just go like i've played gigs as a dj where literally there was one person sitting at the table just staring at me drinking their beer and i've been there like playing like i was at some festival or some shit going crazy like 
there is no cancelling. You have to stand there and fucking fuck it out for three hours, however long your set is, and then get fifty dollars. <laughs> or some of the sets that I played, I play for fucking fifty pounds, and I have to fucking invoice for it. Imagine they couldn't even give it to me in cash. I have to invoice for fifty pounds. <laughs> Sending an invoice of fifty pounds, that's when you know that that's a real humbler. That really humbles you. <laughs> when you get no drink tokens and you have to fucking send an invoice of fifty pounds. Live. I think this time I just don't care. The the energy, the comedy energy is in Austin. No matter what people say. Thank you to Joe Rogan. Do you think Brian's gonna move to Austin, Texas? If Brian moves to Austin, the fire and the kid is basically done. Unless they zoom in. But I, I don't know. I'll get a feeling Brian's like putting out the feelers. Do you think Brian's going to move to Austin? And a lot of other people. So there's a lot of... The energy's where we go, Brian. The energy. Thank you. We'll see. Yeah, I know. The energy's a little low right now. <laughs> Honestly, Brendan's, alcohol Brendan's alcoholic period was so fucking funny. Brendan turning to booze to comfort himself during the pandemic was fucking crazy, bro. God damn, man. He looks rough, innit? He looks so rough. Thank God he stopped drinking alcohol to that level because he was taking bottles of Jameson to the face at like 9am in the morning. Wild dude. I'm surprised he didn't get involved in a... That's the thing that's funny. Don't you find this funny? He's now doesn't drink as much because he's on Ozempic even though he lies and say he's not he's on Ozempic which means that you don't eat and sometimes it has ad it has like side effects of like making you stop some of your addictive you know personalities whatever your traits or the, the things that you did your, your sort of addictions in general I think I've seen some reports or an article of people that are on Ozempic who suddenly quit smoking and shit so he's not drinking as much and he's clearly uh, looks looks like he's lost a lot more weight so he's quote unquote more healthy don't you find it funny that he allegedly crashed his TRX truck? He, he wrecked his truck, but he's not drinking anymore. But back then when he was drinking a lot, he never crashed his car. I was always surprised. Thank God he didn't. But I was always surprised he never totaled his Porsche or the Ferrari or something when he was really drinking heavily, you know? That's the really funny part because he was on Adderall. He was drinking a bunch, tons of fucking energy drinks nicotine pouches everywhere whiskey 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 and somehow he didn't have one crash that we know of anyway but then he gets on ozempic and you know he drives his trx somewhere and flips it wild he would do a lot of stimulus to balance out the drinking now he's just amped up and probably driving crazy oh look at you people man you those you guys are so smart that makes so much sense Hassad. yeah the stimulus to balance out the drinking. Yes, very, very true. That makes that's a that's a very good point. Now the booze is gone, it's just pure fucking amphetamines and methamphetamines and all those other things in between. So he's wired, juice to the fucking gills, as they say. A very, very astute there. Very astute observation. But well, you're older, so I'll take couple it. Couple of old guys. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, that the quit in the cut. I don't even see how that makes the rounds. Because if you listen to the pot, Jin was there. Jin, did you ever hear me say I quit comedy? Just, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm freaking tired. No. No. I said I'm taking a break. I'm juggling too many things and the road beats. When he says a break, though, it's five years. <laughs> as far as the stand up and all this stuff goes, I just juggle a million things and the road just, it, you know, you're, you gotta, so. Honestly, that mustache, man. I know I say it every episode. I know it's boring. I know it's almost a bit hacky. But I just can't understand why it's like that. Why it's so long. There are times where I sometimes fuck up my mustache. Because, you know, you just fuck it up by doing too much. But it's just crazy how he doesn't notice how much longer it is on one side compared to the other. That's the thing that's funny. I'm not saying you should have it perfect. But it's just so much longer on that side compared to the other side. Can't you see? <laughs> exactly, Booth McGee. It's clap, clap for real. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I really fucking don't get it. I really fucking don't get it. I mean, you understand this, and a lot of uh, the viewers understand this, but when you're doing stand-up, like you're doing sets at night during the week, Monday through Wednesday, and then you're on tour Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then you're home Sunday. Yeah. I just can't. 
I can't do that schedule with everything. What is wrong with that schedule? There's literally nothing wrong with that schedule. That's a perfect schedule. Let me go back to it one more time. If you if you if you have a podcast and you basically call your own shots and you make your own schedule, you make your own sorry um, um what's it called? You make your own timetable and shit, right? You call your own hours. What's wrong with that fucking? What's wrong with that schedule? There's nothing wrong with it. Let me go back to it and see what you said again. One more time. Sunday. Yeah. I just can't oh, no, no. stand up like you're doing sets at night during the week, Monday through Wednesday. Sets at night, Monday through Wednesday. Random places, no problem. And then you're on tour Thursday, Friday. Tour, which is just doing shows in front of your own fans. A Saturday, then you're home Sunday. What's wrong with that? You spend the most of the day in, you spend the day at home, so you can take your kids to school. Effectively, you can take your kids to school and probably still pick them up in the day, Monday to Wednesday, or even Monday to Friday, or Monday to Thursday. Let's say you can take your wake up in the morning, do the school run, take your kids to school, bring them back home. And then you can then go and perform stand up and in an evening and then come back and do it again in the next day. What's the problem with that? Now he's trying to make it seem like it's a it's really disturbing like 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 what's the issue? You can still see your kids and then you can hang out with them the whole entire weekend or just on the Sundays. Yeah. I just can't I can't do that schedule with everything I have going on. Well, I can't more, and, more, and then I, also hold love, on, hold on, love, B. Yeah. And then also uh, my son's football coach, yeah. baseball coach. That's what you that's that's that to me is the real reason you love coaching your I despise this side of Brian where he goes out of his way to jump in front of the bullets and be a human shield for Brendan. Let him say what he's saying. And also this isn't a busy schedule. You're you're coaching your kid, not the team. You're coaching one person. And you're not really coaching him. You're just shouting at him from the sidelines while he's training with his fucking other teammates. It's just, a, again, this is unnecessary because if he quit just because he's tired and he's bored and he's over it, no problem. But these excuses are odd. Strange excuses. Just, hey, I'm over it. It's long. I don't want to travel anymore. No problem. Kids. Love it. Absolutely love it. love it. Hate missing it. Can't miss that. But then also I get a, you know, I just got a lot going on. And it's okay to step to just like what? step back from one thing, do this thing, step back. I can go. I find it interesting that he's not trying to get funny. Like, you know, like just do stand up for the sake of it, just to be funny. No, I'm going to quit it because I can't sell tickets. So I'm going to quit. It shows you where he's at with comedy though, isn't it? in general, how he views it. Just a money making, uh, just a money maker. Because he could easily do spots randomly still during the week just to kind of get his sets and reps up. But he doesn't want to do it because it doesn't make money. If it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Go in and out. You know, I've been hustling for over 12 years now. Not that I'm going to stop doing the pods, but as far as the, the plane life and stuff like that, I got I to gotta chill out. Going international or, you know, going across the, the freaking United States ain't happening right now. So I'm going to take a break from that and just focus on family and uh, do my thing, man. That's The sad thing is that this isn't from a real place. That's the really sad thing. So the benefit of this is that his family gets to have their dad back, right? His wife gets to have her husband back. His kids get to have their, their dad back. But it's not from a real place. It's not from an authentic place. It's from a place of, you know, necessity. Because the road has so told him no. And the clubs don't want to book him anymore. That's a sad reality of it. It's like, it's not even as if like he made this decision because he's actually a beast of a dad. Like I, he legitimately cannot bear to be away from his kids too long because he realized when he went to hospital and he was there with his daughter that the only thing that matters is family, like in some fast and furious way. No, the actual reason why he did this is because he hasn't selling tickets because you know, if he was selling tickets, he would probably be in Europe somewhere while his kid's having surgery, God forbid if he was doing that without caring the world so now he's acting as if like family means everything to me and all this stuff. it's like come on bro let's let's call a spade a spade you know what i mean like you're quitting because it's not going well this is fine but let's not try and flip it into something else but you know that's what he's saying that's what the guy there is saying so he's went back on his flipping retirement he's probably still retired i still think so um i don't think it'll change anytime soon a part of me feels like the the mothership situation was the final nail in the coffin i don't he's he's never been able to get over that and i wouldn't get over it if i was him either because i still think it's one of the most fucked up things that rogan has done to brendan maybe that was his final payback for brendan saying that rogan slangs dick because 
most likely Rogan is still paying for that now, right? Most likely Rogan's wife from time to time gives him evil looks, you know, and pierces him in the back of the head with her eyes. So maybe Rogan's ultimate revenge in the end was saying no to Brendan when he asked to perform at the comedy mothership. But if I was Brendan, I'd be so pissed if, if Rogan did that to me. Rogan gave me a set at the comedy store. He brought me to the Laugh Factory. He let me play at the Ice House with him. And then suddenly he moves to another state. He opens his own club. And now all of a sudden, I'm not good enough to play there. It's like, I'd be furious. I'd be like, hold on. You had me performing at the comedy store when I was like two years in. Remember that? Rogan and them lot let him play at their Rogan and Friends shows. And I would bet Brendan Schaub's sets at the comedy store were probably similar to what we saw in, on fucking You'd Be Surprised. So all those guys saw how terrible Brendan was before we did, right? All of those people, that's a funny thing. Everybody in the JREverse saw how bad Brendan was at stand-up before we did. We saw the You'd Be Surprised much later on. So the fact that they let him perform at the comedy mothership, sorry, at the comedy store, and then they said, no, you're not performing the mothership, I would have been so mad if I was Brendan. I would have been so angry. <laughs> and I think that's part of the reason why he ended up retiring. I really do think so. Or like, you know, stepping away from stand-up because that's kind of hard to swallow. You know what I mean? Definitely hard to swallow. But hey, what do I know? What do I know?